Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, thank you for all of the people that watched the last video and thank you to all my new subscribers. In this video I'm going to have a look at the rocky bridge section that I built for my layout in a bit more detail. I built this section here before I got any of the shed layouts uh, sorted. The idea was that it's going to go by the door. The other option is I may put it along this side here, the longer side, um, so I've got a bit more space. So the idea is that I'm going to have this section here kind of continue round, go down the end. Obviously on this end it's going to go round as well. Um, and also because the track is raised it now means I have to work on a, a raised track bed for the rest of the layout which could be fun. I don't like just a, a single loop. I would like to have sort of hills and um, sort of gradients uh, within this. How feasible that is in this space I don't know but we'll find out. And I've actually started to build the next section here uh, which will be going in there so I'm just trying to work out the, uh, the logistics of getting the next pieces of track in there I may have to trim the tracks maybe a little bit earlier before the end here uh, so I can actually get the, the curves in depending on how much space I have this is basically built completely from scratch I've used uh, board for the bottom which I got from bottom of drawer. I used some cardboard to create the underlying structure What I've done is as you can see it's just been hot glued. It's quite sturdy and Then plaster formations which I've made uh, and I just basically built it up The rocks again, they've been created using plaster I didn't have any rock molds so I've created them out of tin foil When I first painted the rocks, I started to use the leopard spotting technique where you dab different colours onto the rocks uh, and then cover it with a wash. I wasn't particularly happy with the result. The finish didn't quite look right in my eyes. So what I did was I stippled grey paint over the whole thing, which turned out a lot better. I then used several different shades of greys and yellows and whites to dry brush uh, the highlights onto the rock. I feel that the final result has actually turned out very, very well. Inside the tunnel, you can see the brick texture in there and it, I've done it so that it looks like a, a sort of sewer. The water level's a bit green to represent a sort of flowing river, a bit of moss and brickwork. I will be including water effects on this section here. At some point when I get around to it. I've already created the river bed. Um, I do plan on including some sort of like river but obviously I need to plan the next section going round so I know what I'm doing. I am planning on adding water effects uh, to the river bed using some resin. Now I'll be honest I've never used resin before so it's going to be uh, a brand new technique for me to use. So how it goes I don't know. Um, obviously I will show that in a separate video. The bridge section is completely scratch built out of lollipop sticks, match sticks, bits of card uh, and then painted and weathered to look really rusty and, and then obviously added various scenery, scenic flocks and that sort of thing, sort of uh, overgrown a bit. It's probably in no way shape or form prototypical as they like to say but I think it works, it works for me anyway. Um, I will be putting uh, a fence along here at some point as well, uh, once I get around to it. I am very pleased with how the bridge turned out. I knew when I built it that I wanted it to look quite old, weathered and rusty. So I referenced various YouTube videos on weathering techniques. found quite a lot of rusting techniques which I uh, applied to it. Um, I think if I did it again I would maybe use some weathering powders as well, just to give it a bit of extra texture. I have since practiced more rusting techniques on various uh, different projects um, which I'll cover in later videos but other than that yeah I really am pleased with how the bridge has turned out. Uh, and then obviously I've got two pieces of track that go across the top there. I've got a little bit more work to do all the ballast and stuff like that which just come away uh, but this is the first piece of track that I've ever actually ballasted. 
just basically following YouTube videos to see what it looks like and I'm quite proud of it. I learned a lot uh, producing this piece. Um, what works, what doesn't work. I think the things that have worked effectively is that I've used cardboard for the underlying structure um, which has worked really really well. However I don't feel that the plaster that I particularly used uh, which was finishing plaster uh, was a particularly effective. I have since got myself another bag of different plaster which I will be using uh, going forward. Having built this first section I feel a lot more confident in my model making. It's the first real section of model railway that I've actually built so for it to turn out as well as it has I'm really really pleased with it. There are bits that I could have maybe done a bit better, there are bits that I'm maybe not entirely happy with, but overall, as part of a model railway, I am genuinely really, really pleased with it. I feel that it will work really well within my layout, and I also feel that the skills I've already learned and already picked up, I can apply to the rest of the layout. It's given me a lot of ideas and a lot of inspiration, and I'm just going to carry on from, from there. If you're interested in following my progress on this model railway in a shed, then please like this video and subscribe to my channel. As well as posting regular updates, I will also be posting various videos, including tutorials, techniques, hints and tips, as well as much more. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.